Hello and welcome back to another history of Overwatch and it's GOATS time baby. It's, it's, you guys better be ready because we're gonna do a lot, a lot, a lot of GOATS and we're not gonna do too many of the matches. We're gonna really stick to the iconic ones, you know, stage finals and all that kind of stuff. Today, we're gonna be looking at the San Francisco Shock taking on the Vancouver Titans in the stage one finals, which was an absolute banger of a match. We just saw the VOD length. It's three hours long. So obviously it's not gonna take us three hours to get through this VOD, um, but we're gonna jump into it pretty quickly so we can jump through. I'm pretty sure it was a seven map banger and we're playing GOATS, so nothing ever dies. Uh, the most important thing talk to talk about going into this uh, season was GOATS is played by almost everyone exclusively at this point. GOATS has taken over everything. Preseason has come and gone. Everyone's tried everything in scrims. And the answer was that GOATS was the best composition. Anyone who was trying to play anything different had very mixed success. Sometimes it worked, but if you played against a good GOATS team, you just fell apart. So we're going to talk about the teams and the stage as a whole, just so that we can sort of give some context to what happened in this stage and then we will watch the match. So sitting at the beginning was the Vancouver Titans in number one going 7-0 alongside New York Excelsior. It's surprising to see New York Excelsior this high because no one thought NYXL, if you look back on the season, NYXL was not that good at GOATS, but they were actually pretty solid. They were, I think they were like third or fourth best team, obviously having a very strong roster from the 2018 season, um, but they were pretty good. Um, and the most important thing to remember between stages is that strength of schedule was a very big thing. We have 20 teams, so you don't play every team. So with that segue, we're going to talk about the Los Angeles Valiant, who had a very hard schedule and had a very sad time, and I was too smart to play on this team, apparently. Um, but Los Angeles Valiant, significant thing that happened in stage one was we went from being uh, probably the second or third best team uh, in terms of a regular season record from 2018 and ended up having a winless stage. A bunch of teams would go on to have winless stages in season two, but yeah, Valiant did it first. So haha, -ha, take that. We're the, we're the best or something. Um, but yeah, so we Valiant had a pretty hard stage. They were close matches, right? Like we only had a minus ma nine map score and you know, we had some hard matches and we played MYXL. We played uh, Spark, who were pretty solid at the time. We played Vancouver, just a bunch of really good teams. The, the We had some bad losses to like Toronto and to the Houston Outlaws. But at that point, everything was in free fall. And it didn't go very well. So that much is history um, in terms of the Valiant's terrible stage in uh, stage one. Everything else is pretty much what you would expect. You know, Florida, Washington, Paris, Chengdu, not really great teams heading into this season. Chengdu hadn't really found their chaotic identity yet and just weren't really very good. The London Spitfire notoriously uh, won the 2018 season, but were no good at goats. They were switching bird ring and profit between who was playing the Brig and who was playing the Zaya left and right. They just didn't really gel together in any way uh, in goats. And so London Spitfire were quite poor. The Shanghai Dragons got their first official win against the Boston Uprising, which was honestly a pretty emotional moment for uh, a lot of people because you know Shanghai Dragons went notoriously. I think this is still the longest record in any competitive league ever not just esports, in sports, the longest loss streak of all times. Obviously, it's a new esport. It doesn't really, but it does have that title. Um, but yeah, Shanghai Dragons, with the addition of Gamsu and some other players, really started to hit their stride and went 0-42. Uh, excluding Collegiate, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm talking like professional leagues, tier one leagues, I believe, was how it was defined. But yeah, Boston were not very good in this season and Shanghai Dragons got the win. And this would be the f first of many wins throughout the season. Shanghai Dragons weren't a great goats team they were fine they were this three and four is pretty much where they would stand but later on in the season when we talk about the history of overwatch stage three they obviously went on to win that whole one playing not goats very notoriously won not goats uh, and playing a farah style on the back of ding's crazy farah um so then we have uh hunger spark which were a pretty solid new team coming into it houston outlaws were fine charge gladiators dallas boston everyone's just sort of like this is all real middle of the pack thing uh, interesting enough, San Francisco Shock only went four and three in their original uh, stage. So they didn't come out of the gates super, super hot. They lost to the Gladiators. Uh, who else did they lose to in this stage? They lost to the Gladiators, they lost to Vancouver. So they'd already played in this stage 3-1. Uh, and then who was the last team they lost to actually? I'm actually curious about this. And they lost to New York Excelsior. So they had a really hard stage when you look at 
who they played against, right? So for as much as they're only four and three, they played against some really hard teams. NYXL, Vancouver Titans, um, just all really solid teams. Um, Atlanta Reign were starting to make their presence felt. They were okay at GOATS. You know, obviously the addition of Dufran in 2019, he made some waves. They had that cool Hollywood clip where they grabbed over the roof, jumped over the roof and then did the grab. But they were, they were just fine. Uh, and Toronto Defiant, actually, in their inaugural season, this is probably the most success they've ever had. Toronto Defiant was in this stage where they fit, they went five and two, uh, because we all know Toronto really struggled to get any form of consistency over the next couple of years. And Philadelphia were pretty strong, obviously having a great roster. Um, so that's pretty much it for stage one. We uh we went through the play. Oh wait, can I, is there a playoffs? Stage playoffs. We can go to the playoffs and have a look at where we ended up. Uh, yeah, there's going to be spoilers on these pages in case you, you haven't realized yet. But um, so for the tiebreakers, Shock and Toronto win the tiebreakers to make it into the teams, uh, to make it into the tournament. Uh, Vancouver Titans, 3 0 Boston, 4 0 Seoul Dynasty. They were just. And it was. We need to talk about the Vancouver Titans because this was really the first time. We saw our contenders players come in and just dominate everything that we thought we know. Obviously, the roster was the old runaway roster that was surprised none of their players got picked up for the inaugural season, but they ended up coming in whole into this 2019 season, and they just were better than everyone else. And I think something important to talk about is Vancouver Titans, I believe, and the runaway team had actually played GOATS the previous season um, on runaway in Korean contenders. And I think that's what gave them a massive leg up is that it felt like they were so far ahead of everyone. Obviously, they're just all incredibly fucking talented, but they felt like they were so high, far ahead of everyone. San Francisco Shock, though, start being their same. 3 0 Seoul Dynasty, 3 0 Toronto Defiant, 4 0 the Philadelphia Fusion. And that's how we get to this 4 3 banger series here, which the Vancouver Titans go on to win. And then we get, you know, there's that iconic shot of super incredibly sad looking. So that's how we got to here. That's the story of where we are right now. We're watching this uh, this stage finals and it's an absolute banger of a match. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it because this is also importantly, everyone's playing GOATS. GOATS is a must pick, only play GOATS and we're starting to see the refinement of what gets played for the next three stages um, predominantly, right? So let's just get into it uh, and start watching this match because as I said, it's a three hour VOD. For five weeks, the anticipation has been building and let's we just watch some awesome, awesome, day awesome day production watch. quality it from the early days. Time. Let's go. And go on there. The Titans will 4 0 Soul and make it to the finals. They've done it. The shock. They win clean 4 0 over the Philadelphia Fusion. One good bomb deserves another. I think that the Titans have got to be worried. Total. And they used to turn this stuff around so quickly. It was so cool. That is the Vancouver Titans roster. And it really didn't even look like much of a challenge for Vancouver. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. I hope you guys are ready. For the stage one finals. What's up, Overwatch fans? We've got. All right, Desk, I love you guys all. I love all you guys, but we're going to jump through this. We don't have time. Hey, Pocket. Hey, Sully. Let's a quick breakdown of what you need to know today. This is the team in the and still do so game. All right, let's just jump in. Wait, can we, let's show the rosters while we're here. Actually, because I don't think they need to walk out. So you got So Min Su, a classic player. His Zaya, I think it gets memed because of the, the So Min Su grab, but he was incredible. He was the second best Zaya in the league behind um, behind um, Sinatra. Obviously, Bumpo like defined how Ryan was played. His team, he was just so aggressive, and his team just supported him. Slime's Lucio was fucking bonkers. Like I watched a lot of Slime buds trying to improve. He just came in and his just impact was crazy. Twilight on the Zen. Yada, one of the few people um, mirroring uh, Violet on the Zen. Then we go back to San Francisco Shock Trend Championship winning team. Moth, Violet, Moth Rights. Uh, you got Choi Kyobin. Your boy Super, who went on to have one of the craziest uh, main tank diffs consistently and still riding off of that. Sinatra, who no longer is playing. Oh, watch and Rascal, the flex god. Something that I don't believe we see much of in season one, uh, sorry, in stage one, is the Rascal Baptiste. 
Rascal Baptiste instead of the Brig was this really unique thing that they did that no one else really was able to master. On like first point defenses like Anubis and Volskaya and stuff like that, Rascal played Baptiste and it had like this crazy change of effect. And no one ever really knew how to beat it. I remember us when we played against the Shock. They, the Shock were just fucking bonkers. Like there, there was, you couldn't do anything against it. Uh, and that's just because Rask was just, he's known as one of the most flexible players to ever play in the league. Just a great DPS player, great support player. Bap wasn't an out. This, oh, that's true, me. I actually can't remember when Baptiste gets introduced. So was talking about it like with Rascal and Bap, they could just kite forever. And that's true. Like the amount of healing that the Baptiste could just pump out and then the lamp. I don't think people had really found the the true effectiveness of how good Baptiste was at this point. Because as I said, we we're playing goats when Baptiste came out. So people didn't really, you know, touch it too much. But let's get into it. So obviously full-time goats. Zen, Lucio, Brig with the triple tank. We're gonna do it. And you're gonna see this head to head for a lot over the next couple of history of Overwatch. So Shark's gonna go to the point. This was like always an interesting point because it was about who got control of the point. So Shock gets the advantage because they get the control of the point. But the disadvantage is that the uh, Vancouver Titans can hold their, uh, their people on the high ground. So Zaya Bubbles are very, very important at this point. Zaya Bubbles are the, some of the most important resources that you can call and that can be tracked. Um, and the Zaya is essentially the damage dealer of this composition. Uh, if you don't know how goats are played, the tanks are just super important and super goes down. And that, that goes back to the, the shield management of super. He spent too much, like after the bubbles and he just took too much down on the thing. But Sinatra has a, they both have grabs already. What is this? And transcendences this close into the point before it's even began. But yeah, I, I think that's probably not a great grab by Sinatra. Losing Super, like Super and Zaya, sorry, uh, Reinhardt and Zaya are really the big damage dealers. The Reinhardt when they can swing through the entire enemies, the Zenyatas with the Oars, but the Zaya really is the King Ping damage. And the biggest, I guess, judgment for how good a Zaya was, was how quickly were they charging grab. And that's what Sinatra was the best at. He charged grabs so fucking fast. Same thing for Zenyatas. What made a great Zenyatta? How fast could you charge the Transcendence? Lucio ults, yeah, and Lucio ults, right? Like, if you're just amping heals, you just you just get so much so much ult charge. Because you're playing as a six-man unit, all the ults just charge so fast. Oh, Shadow Grab. Super can't get between Sinatra. Uh, sorry, Shadow, Diva Bomb. And ult ultimates are, like... When, when Goats was a thing, you're not playing an FPS game anymore. It literally feels like a MOBA, and it's a strategy game of... What ultimates did you use? What ultimates did they use? How are they going to take this fight? How do we adjust against that? Because people didn't really die outside of ultimates. If you didn't have ultimates, nothing died for the most part, right? Unless you both don't have ultimates in the first fight. So all of a sudden you look at it, right? Like Vancouver Titans have all three defensive, almost have another grab. So Shock's gonna look for a Shadow Diva Bomb probably or something like that, because it's all they got. Transcendence comes out, the rallies out, Slime still keeps the beat for the uh, eventual, probably the Diva Bomb that's going to come out, or anything really bad that happens, right? So you have so many uh, things, you, oh, wow, that was a great grab by So Min Su. Yeah, and it, who you pinned out of the grab was super important, right? Because you really wanted to gra uh, to pin uh, someone who you could one-shot, because if you do a tank, they just get healed up usually. Anyway, it was such a weird time. Wow, great beat by Moth. Um, it was such a weird time because generally, like, as you saw, Vancouver Titans got a six-man grab and they still almost didn't win this fight or, like, didn't win it cleanly. Like, grab, getting big numbers in your grabs and stuff like that isn't the most important thing. It's about isolating individual players. And that's why, like, generally the Briggs are the most isolatable and then, like, the Lucios and the Zens. Okay, first round goes to the Vancouver Titans. So there's a massive advantage when you when you win the first fight. Winning the first fight in GOATS was also super imp important because you had so many supporters that you could generally um, cycle them and use them fast enough and just keep winning team fights. So winning the first fight is all, always super important. So on maps in which Reinhardt couldn't really close the distance or do a whole lot, we called it like Winston Goats, like Woats. 
or like Winston Goats is what most people called it, was somewhat popular as well because the Reinhardt just didn't get that much value in this situation. Uh, because like, you don't really do a whole lot. Winston Goats sort of fell out of favor a lot, I think as time went on and people just played regular Goats, but... Boats, yeah. There was boats, yeah. There was there there, there, were, there were lots of different versions of goats <laughs> throughout this history. Um, but okay, so Vancouver, as I said, losing the first team fight, so that's super important because the reason it's so important is like, look at the old charges. So if you lose the first fight as the Vancouver Titans, right, you're generally going to lose the second fight because the Zaya gets grabbed faster. You get a defensive ult like somewhat faster. So all of a sudden it starts snowballing out of control. Oh, slime goes down for free, and that was something that was uh, that's worth noting for Lucio's as well. So Lucio's, you can boop Ryan's. Ryan's get booped completely. Uh, like there's no like steadfast. I think it was called. There's no steadfast, so you can boop the Ryan or the Winston as much as you want. So Lucio's ended up becoming integral for controlling positioning and just pushing people around, especially the Reinhardt's pushing them into your team and isolating individual targets. The biggest issue was when you're playing against the best Zens in the world and the best Zayas, it was very easy to get caught on a wall, like in, in the way that like you're, you're on the high ground and the Zen just like fucking two taps you or the Zayu has full charge and sees you and just beams you down, right? So it had to be like stemmed and the best Lucios were the ones who knew how to find that, ba that perfect balance. So Sinatra really popularized this style of playing the game as well. Um, when you had Reinhardt's, and that kind of stuff, Zarya positioning ended up being king. If you could get your Zarya into a position where she had full charge and could just shoot at people and beam people down from a distance, you were so valuable and you could easily kill targets and isolate targets. And yeah, and that, that's that's something that Sinatra did better than anything. Zarya um, like map control and positioning was so valuable. 10 let's talk about lane control lane control is such an important thing it's like at this point it wasn't as popular as like the thing everyone just took like head-on fights but a lot of divas playing hyper aggressive into the back line or zayas taking high ground positionings or trying to hold this positioning ended up becoming more and more valuable then it became the lucio's job to make sure the zaya didn't get too much space and it does keep evolving we haven't seen too much of it just yet though how do you consistently do that? It depends on each map. And it changed from map to map. It, pay, it changed on how, where everyone was playing. And, you know, everyone had... There were, like, pretty famous spots for where Zayas would always play for. Like, think of Hollywood first point, getting on that high ground. At first, people were, like... The best way to describe it is, like, you know the first point of Hollywood? When... You, where that's corner? At first, people were just running into each other on that corner and just, like, playing the shield war and just playing the back and forth. But then what happened is people realized how valuable it was is not to have your Reinhardt up there, right? You would send your whole team up to the high ground on that Hollywood first point, and then your Reinhardt, your Brig, your Diva would drop, and your Lucio what, what, would drop, what, what, but then you would keep your Zen and your Zaya on the high ground. And what that would allow you to do is that the weak points of your composition could stay and have free access to free shooting, free right clicks, all that kind of stuff. And it ended up snowballing out of control, and that ended up becoming a really big thing over time of controlling that space. Yo, Dragon Ball, thank you for the 27 months. Oh, yeah. Vancouver Titans have, like... This is the snowball that I was talking about, right? Like, they, they, they didn't get value out of their last grab and their primal, and then they lose people, and it just snowballs and snowballs and snowballs. Look how many ults Shock is about to have. This fight is over. Dude, Sinatra literally just threw that at Choke because he knows he can. Bash also goes through shields. I don't know, remember... Yeah, I don't think that's in this season of Al. I don't think that ever happened in Al. I think that was pre-Al. I don't know exactly where Brig is at this point in terms of the patch, but... She's still broken. I love the maps when leading the Lucio touch the floor, yeah. Alright, this is a pretty common map... So the shock getting this positioning here first is like super super important, right? Like so the shock have already won the first battle, right? They did enough damage to bumper that makes him feel that he has to back off and then they fall away. I'm gonna yeah, so Vancouver know that they can't fight into this position So they're actually gonna rotate over to this mini uh, Sorry this like left side and then all of a sudden they both have cover they both have thing and this is a somewhat of an even fight 
Why didn't people TP out of spawn? Um, the reason people didn't TP out of spawn is... The only reason people TP out of spawn at this point is because they play like a tracer or something like that, right? Someone who can catch up to the rest of the squad. No one can catch up to the rest of the squad if you TP out of spawn. Uh, maybe you could have like made an argument that your D.Va player should switch to Symmetra and TP you out of spawn and the D.Va will just be late to the fight. But in general, you wanted your whole six-man squad there being there. Sinatra, so goes up, tries to get some damage. Deep yeah, Briggs armor doesn't go away, I believe, at this point as well. Briggs will always be broken until Inspire's moved. I think Briggs in a really good spot right now. It does way too much healing. It's completely unskilled. Well, I just disagree with you on that point. But I don't want to get into a discussion of where Brig is right now. I feel like it's very... Oh, that was greedy by Violet. One of the worst things you could do was dropping your main tank. Because generally, a lot of your defensive ultimates were built around your main tank. Don't let your main tank die. Because once you lose your main tank, it's such an important player. Like, look, look at how much healing goes into him. That wasn't an ultimate. That was just the Brig pack. Like, look at how low Bumper is, right? when this happens. Look at how low he is. This is the Brig pack, by the way. The Brig pack is what goes into him. I'm pretty sure here. That was the Brig pack. It instantly does like, uh, it's like 150 health. Uh, instant 150 health with the Inspire healing around you, plus the Zen Orb, plus the Lucio healing. It's just, it's just, it was so hard to get through. Wow, great shadow by Super. And then blocks. Wow, that was actually nuts by Super. He he just shot. He actually turned this fight. That was a big turn by Super. MTD. Oh, <clears throat> never mind, Super. You suck. <laughs> yeah, Sinatra almost has another grab, right? And that's how fast you could get them, right? You know how we just talked about the pack. Like, let's see. Let's go back to when he when he grabbed. He grabs at twenty five percent. At 50%, he almost has the grab again. Like, you get grabbed so fast in these, fight in these fights if you're fully charged. Did you like GOATS competitive? I think playing GOATS was a lot of fun, but still, even then, it lasted too long. GOATS just lasted way too long. That was the biggest problem with it. It was cool that it got refined so much, but yeah. I also think it was very boring to watch. Unless you're watching a match like this where you're watching the two best teams play GOATS. When it wasn't the two best teams playing GOATS, it was nowhere near as fun. How does Super die here? Oh, is Super not in the grab? I think Super was over here in the grab, so he wasn't in the grab. So then he ends up getting bashed by Huxel and dies in it. Ooh, the grab demon bomb! Oh, yeah. I'll charge faster. Yeah, I believe so as well. Look at look at how much Vancouver used for that though, right? Literally full five ultimates. Would the game be more refined? No, like it gets refined per meta to meta to meta, right? Like I don't think everyone would have gotten better at the game. If anything, I think Goats made everyone better players because I think Goats embodied the value of... Because... The thing that made GOATS interesting is that you were refining that 1%, right? You were trying to find that 1% of extra value, trying to get that extra value, extra value, extra value. And I think positioning and alt management and alt combos became heavily refined during the GOATS era to the point that people to this day still do that. Uh, alt tracking as well. It really accentuated all of the important skills that you needed and everyone got really good at that, doing that. One more fight would essentially give them the win on this map if they can win it. Wow, how does he get away with that? I think Bumper was out of position there. Good counter beat by Slime. Oh, Bumper's so low. Oh, good play by Choi Hyoben. And that was something that Divas did a lot more as time went on, is they would play on the high grounds, and then when you... Because you don't want to spend your time shooting at a Diva, right? Shooting at a Diva, she has Matrix, it felt like wasted time. Uh, unless you're Azaya. Um, so a lot of Divas played like aggressively and then they would push in the opposition Reinhardt because the Reinhardts didn't have Steadfast at this point as well. Like they're negating to boops. I feel like Moth should be going for this. Yeah, Moth and Choi should be going for this, right? Oh, 
Nah, not a very good grab. They needed more than just super in that. Oh, there's a better grab. Wait. Super just took Bumper off the map. <laughs> super got booped and they went off the edge. Yeah, well, fuck it, I guess. Bomb's good. Yeah, it gets Harksel. Slime gets isolated as well. All right, there it is. If I die, you die with me, yeah. San Francisco start off this series with a statement. Oof. They remain undefeated there on Nepal for stage one. All right, let's go. Numbani, next map. Numbani was an interesting map. Because you couldn't really do anything interesting with it. So it literally, this whole fight is just fighting for this top left corner. And it's the stupidest fight in history because everyone has to walk through this narrow fucking chokeway. <laughs> so, it, like, there was a lot of full holds at this time. Oh, wow. Wait, Bumper? Did Bumper go for a fire strike? Well, why is Bumper not on the high ground? I don't know if he got booped off the bat. Super's earnings in Alice so high. Well, he's, he's like, he's won two championships. They won a bunch of stages, right? Yeah, like... So once you're on the low ground, right? Like, here's what I'm talking about, right? So Natra has this high ground positioning, right? And the problem is the only person who can really deal with the Zaya is the Diva. But if the Diva tries to fly at the Zaya and she doesn't get the kill, like, let's say the Zaya gets packed by the Brig or gets some support... That Zyre gets full charge off of this uh, this uh, Diva and almost gets a grab. So it's like a it's like a gamble every time you go for it. But like, look at his positioning. He's just free to right click and beam down. Fortunately, he doesn't have a lot of energy to do much with. But oh, whoa, what a shatter by Super! How does he get away with that one? Bumper's kind of getting MTD'd right now in this match. So you can see how important map control is, right? Like everyone is playing everything. For, ooh, everything for map control. All right, there's Rascal rally. So they're rally. So because everyone is playing the same six heroes as well, it's important to note. It was so important to note who used the ultimates first, right? So Huxel uses the rally first. Rascal mirrors, but he's a second later, like second or two later. Twilight transcendences. Violet does it two seconds later. So Shock still have the advantage in this fight right now because they are currently a couple of seconds behind but they are still all alive so that's probably going to force the graviton out of so min su once their transcendence ends there it goes the beat comes out from moth to counter the transcendence great sinatra's graviton comes out but he dies because um before moth's beat comes out i believe or maybe he dies in the grim but then Choi goes in i did Choi not have the diva bomb yeah the big issue here for the shock in this situation Oh, Choi did get the D-bomb. I'm so surprised he didn't throw this. I'm surprised he did not throw that diva bomb. I think that would have been their best chance to win that fight. And that's like the cyclic nature of it, right? Of like how everything changes based on who uses ults first and who has the advantage on like getting the ultimate first. And now that we've done the first fight, it becomes who gets the ults again faster. No people say Void, but Choi is the man. I agree. Like I really like Choi. I think I would I'd rather have Choi in um, on Diva. They did get a tick, yeah, but ticks aren't really that big of a deal in goats. Like I guess like it is nice because Shock know now know that they have the tick. Like they can full hold, and full holding was very common in Ghosts because everything snowballed so fast. So I guess it is valuable, but it's also of the idea of like if generally if you get the point, you're gonna get like if you start getting ticks, you're probably gonna win the fight. Oh, Violet. Yeah, yeah. Bumper is white off angling, like going wide, and it's getting his the rest of his team shattered and stuff like that. Ah, oh, super dies though. Diva Bomb doesn't really get much value. Yeah. Super's getting good shatters, but it feels like they can't follow up. Rather Void and Sigma, 100%, right? Well, Super is the greatest main tank of all time, according to PyChat. Yeah, well, but like, that's PyChat. <laughs> I don't agree that Super is the greatest main tank of all time. I think during the season, this season, he was the greatest main tank. He was the best main tank in this season. 
I mean, like, Super's, like, top three, but I would rather give it to, like, a Fearless. I, I think... I think Fearless on the Shanghai Dragons last year and that and his flexibility on a lot of different comps and stuff like that. But I think you can make an argument for Super. But I think only this 2019 season was his really best. I think, yeah, I think the Super's the best run to play the game. But that's why I think... That's the only reason I think he doesn't get the title is because... Outside of that, it's like he has that really good Roadhog that they pull out every now and then. And he, we know he can play Winston, but he hasn't played much of it. And his Orisa's fine, but I don't, I, I don't know. I don't really rate the best main tanks by their Orisa play because it's hard to really see their value. Um, so I think, like, I feel like having a really good Wrecking Ball on a Winston is like a must to be the greatest player of all time, right? All right, good grab. Diva Bomb should cover that a little bit, but such Sinatra had the bubble, yeah. Ooh, good shadow by Bumper. Troy Kyoven Bomb to count. Oh, yeah. And this is like this... I feel like Shock have been getting good windows, and they've been getting good moments to get picks. But I, is it their... Def I think it might be their support ultimates. I feel like the support ultimates of the Vancouver Titans have been better. And that's been, that's been able to keep them alive. Obviously, that bumper shadow is what saved them there. But that, like, how does Shock win this, right? Like, they, you just don't win this fight. They have all three support ultimates. As long as they don't overlay them and then something goes terribly wrong. Yeah. And that's it. Like, you... Ooh. Yeah, like, they can just use those support ults so free. I think, still think Mana was still the best main tank season two. Yeah, Mana was really good in GOATS as well. And I think Mana was an underappreciated main tank, right? Because he was very good at Winston. Obviously, he I don't think he's ever been the best in any season. Maybe season one. Um, but he's been so consistently good over such a long period of time, right? He's more flexible than Fearless. He just rarely played. I don't agree with that. I think Fearless is very flexible. I think he plays all the main tanks. Like, I, which main tank doesn't Fearless play? Arissa? I just don't think they play Arissa because that's not good for their comp because they don't have a hit scan player, right? Like on Dallas, right? The only reason he doesn't play Arissa is because they never want to play behind shields because they don't have hit scan players, right? How's his Ryan? His Ryan was good. His Ryan's solid. His ball isn't amazing. No, I think it. he showed a really good ball in the final stage of this most recent tournament. His ball's good. It's not the best in the world, I don't think. I feel like that's a like the, that's a narrative that's just been going around that his ball wasn't good. I think everyone thought that, and that's everyone thought that because they only he only played Winston in this season. But I'm pretty sure once he showed his ball, his show, his ball was actually quite good. Over the course of history, it wasn't great. Okay, yeah, I can understand that, right? But go on. It's gonna be great. I'm excited. The shock to set up on defense here. It's not fake Gaga Among, but it's good, yeah. And that's it, right? Like I think it's definitely serviceable. And his Winston's obviously one of the best in the world. And he plays Reinhardt. And like I as I said, I, I can't remember if uh, feels playing Arissa, but like I still stand by it. I don't think Arissa is a hard hero to be great at, right? Like I feel like it's almost impossible to notice how good the Arissa is when you're watching it from a casual standpoint. You'd have to really like look at what he's doing to like know exactly how good Arissa is. Because, like, it, it's all pretty much on the pools, right? What else are you doing that's really good? Your aim, your positioning. But I feel like that stuff's pretty rudimentary, right? All right, so Vancouver... So do you see what Vancouver did there? This is a thing that people used to do. They used to start going main. You'd be like, oh, we're going to go main. And then as soon as the Reinhardt drops, you rotate, right? That's the call right here. They speed boost and they rotate because Super wanted to get over to this corner. So they rotate and then all of a sudden it's a scramble to get back onto the high ground for everyone involved, right? Super makes it and it works for them, right? But that's, that's what happened there. You lose the ability to disengage here if you're the Vancouver Titans. You lose the Lucio speed boost you provide. So a lot of these heroes not able to make it out. 
hold on to their lives because you see some cleanup kills going in favor of the shot. And that, that just goes to show you how important positioning is, right? People are literally just going to run around and play ring around the rosy just to get the perfect positioning. Some of these ultimates rather early, which allows the Titans to stockpile some of their ultimates. So you see the super already with that earth shatter online. You're getting close to a transcendence on violet. You're going to have to use some of these... A lot of teams had this mistake of it took them like two minutes to take the first fight and then they go on to lose it. And then you like only really get like two or three fights. How long will this patience from the Titans last? At what point yeah, like Titans, they just got to go, right? Like it feels like they're fumbling around too much here. Fake a rotation to the low ground. You see them here. They realize the shock aren't biting, so they have to commit. They're going to push through the main entrance here, which is quite perilous with the shock all assembled. All right, so they end up going to the point. Oh, good shatter. Yeah, great shatter by Super. That's a bumper pin if you've ever seen one before. Also, a very underappreciated thing of the uh, the Vancouver Titans was Huxel's. Well, I guess it wasn't underappreciated, but forgotten is how good Huxel's brig was for the Vancouver Titans. Fucking Huxel's brig, dude, was everywhere. I remember playing against it. The number of times that dude bashed me out of a shatter, I swear to God. Uh, sorry, I bashed me out of a beat. He's just he, his understanding of his limitations was so good. So Rascal rallies later. Oh, Hawks! Look at look at how okay. This is funny. Look at how strong Brig is. Brig is the only person. Look at where this Brig is compared to the whole team. The San Francisco Shock has all their ultimates, and they have their rally going, and they're still afraid to push Hawksall. He's they still they have like they're eyeing him off like I don't think we do this because they know as soon as they get close They're gonna get dropped on but that's like how Durable Brig was is that she just still couldn't die in that time. It's bait. It's straight-up bait But it's like crazy that a, a support hero can be that much of a bait. I Feel like that that transcendence by Violet might have been unnecessary. Oh, that's this is what every time a diva threw a bomb This is what they wanted but Bumper somehow gets the shield off. Somehow they don't die. The, the blocking of the diva bombs was so crazy. Like it got so many levels of meta deep. Beat beat wouldn't save you from that. They didn't get hit by the bomb. The bomb is in your face. It does a thousand damage, and beat doesn't give that much healing. It gives like if you oh slime. All right, now we got a half time. Maybe that's why it is. We just skip like 20 minutes for the half times. Then the Lucia, yeah. So that that was generally ended up becoming the important thing. So what would happen is the Zaya would grab, and then the Diva would bomb, and then it was the Lucio's job to get close to the grab, and then immediately after the grab goes off, and so the Diva needs to time the bomb perfectly until so that it blows up after the grab is done. And then directly after the grab is done. And then the Lucio needs to time the boop directly after the grab is done. You boop it so that everyone goes flying in all directions. And then the bomb blows up and it kills a bunch. And that happens a lot. Shorter breaks is such a great change. Yeah, waiting mat 40 mats. Well, that was something that we did a lot. I think this season was the first season we got rid of half times. And obviously that's less time for me to talk and less screen time, but it was such a good change. Half times felt so clunky. It just felt like every match got extended by like 30 minutes with half times and players would be missing. And then the half times, like it's not enough time to do any analysis other than just be like a highlight package for what had just happened, right? Would Hyrie in this comp is the least impactful? In other words, the least responsibility. I don't think there was a least responsible player. Um, I think that's why a lot of people like goats. Every character is so important. I think you could get away with doing the least playing Lucio. But what happened at the Overwatch League level is that every, as a Lucio, you needed it to, to be doing a lot. Because otherwise you're just losing value. But I think if you just wanted to become a speed and heal bot as Lucio, you could do that. And I think it would be fine. While every other thing is like you need to be good. Brig was the most important. Yeah, Brig, Brig was important. You need to be super aware, have good bash, all that kind of stuff. Zen's obviously you need to be pumping out damage to Zen. Good Discord orbs. Diva, maybe you could justify that Diva wasn't as important. Like maybe Lucio Diva were the two least important in GOATs. He 
Isn't it Zen? Yeah, but those those shots are super important. Like charging the speed of that Zen, that grab, uh, the transcendence is important. That's an important fuck up by uh, Violet there. They use the transcendence. That's going to cost them. So they don't longer have a transcendence advantage. No, otherwise he gets focused every fight. Exactly, Robo Jesus. But you could have potentially just like stand it on your team and then not die. I mean, the later part of the Goats wasn't Transcendence used offensively and Diva Bomb was used defensively to counter grab because the Zens were charging ult so fast. Yeah, so what ended up happening is that um, people got so good at blocking and defending the grab Diva Bomb that people ended up using their own Diva Bomb to counter the opposition Graviton. So if you didn't eat the grab, the Diva would throw the bomb in the air so that all of a sudden they couldn't follow up with the grab. Um, but there were like multiple instances of way you could do that kind of thing. But yeah, grab Diva Bomb ended up becoming pretty, it, it ended up getting hard countered because what would happen is people stopped, uh, people used Transcendence to keep the tanks up a lot of, more of the time. And then the beat was used to counter the Diva Bomb. Uh, because the, the beat could, unless you're like literally eating the Diva Bomb when it blows up, if you time the beat, it doesn't matter really where you were, you would survive. But yeah, it, there, there was like a lot of different like, oh, that was such an important shatter by Super. Holy fuck. Dude, Bumper is straight up getting outplayed in this series so far. Super is outplaying the shit out of Bumper. Because like that would have been a free win for Vancouver if that he hadn't got that shatter. Oh, that's a good grab. Because it caught both of them on either side. Oh, Bumper pins Moth though. Like look at this pin and tell me that Moth isn't mad. Like why is Bumper pinning here? He shatters, misses completely, and then just... And then just pins from fucking across the map. And just ki hits Moth. Dude, how are the Titans winning this? And here's the th Here's, like, the bad part about GOATS, right? Is it doesn't feel like we're seeing any, like back and forth play or anyone taking any positioning it feels like this is something that i think a lot of people forget obviously all the the goats connoisseurs are like oh yes this is peak overwatch we're always this is the greatest play of all time um it is boring to watch in a situation like this where it's like it just feels like ultimates are going across your uh, your screen and then like one team is just getting full held and it's hard to really see the effect like literally the san francisco shock might have primarily lost that fight because moth got pinned some like random ass fucking pin. Of Rascal, the rally to engage. Maybe that forces Hacksaw to use his rally. Then you like the shock have to walk through a choke against a team that is defending said choke with ultimates and then just running at each other. As much as there was a ton of wow, look at that double boop. Actually, this is cool because this happened a lot. Look at this slime. Uh, look at this slime Janu double boop. Slime goes in, boop super, and then Janu goes in, boop super again. All of a sudden, super gets fucking bashed and is super out of position, and then they get the grab. That is the cool things, right? That is what people talk about when they say peak Overwatch, crazy plays, minute things that really di determine how good things were. That was cool, right? But if you're not paying attention to that shit, all that you saw was a grab went down and they all just ran at them and hit them, hit them with their face, right? Absolutely sucks to watch. And that's what a lot of people had a problem with goats, right? Vi's facing a lot of trance. I've noticed that multiple times he's used trance in times in which they weren't winning the fights. He's gonna need that transcendence to the shock now. Though they have pretty much one more chance to take this point. Twenty-two seconds remain in the round. Sinatra must connect with this graviton surge. It must be a gainful exchange. Goats is bowling, fun to play, awful to watch. <laughs> yeah, so it's like Here's the problem. Shock need to drop, right? But it's going to feel bad when they do it. Yeah, there's no charge. So even in this grab, they have no damage. Twilight has the transcendence. There's no way they get through anything. Hawksaw's going to get the rally. Diva Bomb. Oh, big Choi play. Wait, did Choi kill Janu? Yo. This is why... Choi is considered the greatest off tank. Look at this bomb. Knows they're in trouble. He sees Janu throw the diva bomb. He throws the diva bomb. Fucking diffs the shit out of uh, Janu on the high ground. Gets the 2k with the great bomb placement. Let's go, Choi. Choi appreciator in this chat.
Super also shouted, no, 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 we don't talk about shit. Super. Oh my god. And this this is another thing that we need to talk about in terms of goat sorrows looking like. You can just like there, there were eight second respawns still. You still had the nine second respawn. So if you won the fight at, at the very end, you just run to the fucking point and they the, slime and Soman Su aren't even alive by the time the San Francisco Shock are on the point. Look at that, like how do you win this if you're Vancouver Titans? God, it was so stupid. Oh yeah, two CP and goats, baby. They literally almost got full held, and they went on to get. Oh, oh, they they double support altered, but I don't think it matters. They're so far ahead. Yeah, they they went from being full held to capping with three minutes left in the fucking in one play. Oh, actually, let's 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 watch this playback. Oh, better. Janu uses his self destruct there as well, so he's able to take him out before he can get back in his. Ultimate is four minute time extension. They didn't need a map that we compare the time back. Now I'd be pretty annoyed. They thought that they were home free on this map, and the shock was thrown a spanner in the. Well balanced game mode. That's before 250 remake, yeah, so you wouldn't. You would never die to the remake. Can you imagine? Oh my god, can you imagine if goats happened and there was 250 damage remake? Oh my god, that would have been even more cancer. They people would be throwing diva bombs, grabbing, dropping a mech on top of it. But honestly, nothing would die anyway. Those overtime scenarios, like Danny, our insider, was telling us, you know, the shock. Hey, it would have been chaos. It would have. It would have been awful. It would have been awful. Playing a little bit frantic right there. It goes into that crazy overtime scenario. They come out on top. Just that experience they gained throughout stage one. Super standing on the awning there is Reinhardt. Can't really be hit by the Titans until they push through this trope. It's a great opportunity for the shock to get free, unanswerable damage. And when he uses it, when he puts the shield up, he can actually see the players coming through. So we can see around. So this was actually something really common that a lot of teams did. So when you go, the diva just fucking ints. You just kind of like int in to create space for the rest of your team, and then hopefully that gives you space. Because if you just walk with your Ryan, your Ryan just takes too much damage. So that was really well played by Janet. All right, Vancouver got the reset. Oh, wow, look at this positioning by Soman Su. Oh, but Bumper dies in the meantime while Soman Su is getting positioning. Wait, he grabbed? Oh, shit! What? Oh, Super dies, they lose mech. Damn, that was a good turn by Vancouver Titans. I'm glad Mr. X won't be casting this yet. Well, I have bad news for you. <laughs> Matt Mr. X is definitely casting this year. Leak? Well, it's more, I assume so. We haven't heard anything that matters. And generally, if you don't hear anything, it's generally a good sign. Unless Matt's going to go full time. Then who would cast with Mitch? Leak the script. <laughs> oh, okay. Because <laughs> Mitch said Mitch has already said that he's casting this year, and we haven't heard anything, so he'll be a producer now. What well, about works on the back end, right? He's doing a lot of our stuff. That's a good question, actually. I shoot Matt's casting. Oh! The new John Spectre. Matt will be in chat soon. We'll ask him. Oh, good transcendence. That was such an important transcendence. Oh, that's a good grab, though. That's a better grab. Maybe they should have saved the transcendence. Yeah, I, I guess I didn't realize they'd lost Soman Su. If you don't have Soman Su, you don't have the damage, right? 
tell you what, Mitch, I mean, it's towards the end where you see Super use the Shatter and then the grab comes through from Sinatra, but the play is made by Moth. Bumper actually connects the really nice Earth Shatter, but Moth actually using the wall riding Lucio goes off the pole, then uses the boop to displace him and just pushes him which way over. I was also listening casting through the Avast co stream Pog. VTubers, yo, I finally got a, I got a VTubing uh, thing now. We, I got a rig set up in the back. You guys are going to be, you guys are going to love it. All right, grab transcendence. That should be a pretty easy way to hold the grab from the ground. So Rascal has rally. So you don't want to go first as the defensive team. So they're probably going to wait until anything happens and then Rascal's going to rally. Oh, there's a bumper diff. And this is what bumper was so known for. It's like just doing random shit, right? Just like flank shattering for like no apparent reason. Good grab by Sinatra again, but the transcendence is out. Why is Soumitsu down? Did he get shattered? He got shattered. Shock's running out of ultimates. Oh, bumper goes down though. Literally, that was a classic ghost fight where there's just, we had 19 ultimates. The fight lasted for a minute and then someone just dies. Huxel just ran it down into Super's face, yeah. Huxel loved to just go deep when he had Rally, especially. Kind of miss Goats. It's the kind of thing that you're like, man, it'd be sick to play Goats again. And if we did it, you would play it for, you'd watch or play it for one week and you're like, man, this fucking blows. <laughs> There's that. There was the boot, by the way, right? You see, you see that. Obviously, didn't work, but. And then bumper goes down. Yeah, bumper's getting caught too much. Bumper needs to be careful. He's getting isolated. Like Shocker just putting all their focus onto making sure bumper cannot play the game. So even outside of ultimates, they're just rushing down bumper, rushing down bumper, bumper, rushing down bumper. Super pinned him. Yeah. They roll through stage one, but they have the second Zombie Comp sucks way more than this. Uh, no, I think Zombie Comp is very similar to Goats in like so many different factors, right? Why teams played Horizon? Because Horizon was a great map to defend for a lot of people, right? And like, Horizon is not an awful map. It's just the first point sucks, but if you're confident in your first point, then you would just play it. You'd pick Horizon, right? As much as it's a shitty map because the first point was absolutely awful, if you would, if you had a good... Oh, did he hit that shatter? No. Oh, super diff. Wow, he could have killed Bumper if he just focused him. That might have been a... That might have been a mistake by Super. If he had just pump, uh, pinned Bumper into this wall, they might have probably won that. Oh, good grab. Fire's got the transcendence out as well. Sinatra's got full charge. As long as you have a Zarya with full charge, anything's possible. Oh, fuck. Huxa, uh, Rascal dies, though. Oh, that's a good boot by Slime, but Bumper's down as well. Oh, there's a Lucio. Good play by Slime. Is Slime going to get the Sinatra win as well? No. And this is, like, what I was talking about, right? With, like... Yeah, you like you you can just be a heal bot and a speed bot if you want to play Lucio, or you could be like the best Lucios though were just putting in so much work. He's literally just fucking with everyone right now. What zombie comp? Zombie comp was played this year, and that was like the Lucio Moira Winston comp that just like never died. It was like Lucio Moira Reaper. Lucio mains a mechanical freak. Some of the best ones are just incredible. With Reaper Echo, yeah. So uh, the Echo was what made it really zombie comp because the Echo would just turn into Divas and then she would also throw three Diva Bombs. So there were just Diva Bombs going everywhere, nobody ever dying, everyone just sustaining, and then just like random deaths. Nerf this! 
Reaper not Ryan? Yeah, I said Reaper. Echo would do Monkey Diva and use Remak, yeah. And that's that one where it's like, and then like there were some situations where like pe some people would play Brawl and play the Rhine instead. The Baptiste and then the Echo would like triple shatter. It was, it was bad. It, it was, it was annoying for a different reason. So Vancouver winning the first fight is like enormous here. Oh, that was a good timing. Yeah, that was a great timing by the Shock. They isolated so many people. The bumper pin. Oh yeah, they go on a spawn. It's gonna have to be slime, or I think you gotta send slime and Janu different directions, right? All right, Janu gets it. He's dead for that though. Yeah, straight up. I feel like you should—they should have faked Janu and slime should have gone for it. Yeah, good transcendence, good grab, good transcendence, good diva bomb, good beat, shatter missed. Another shatter hits. Beat goes down. Everyone's out of ultimates. Okay, now we get to play the game. <laughs> cool. That was sick. <laughs> as Super would say, uh, sorry, as Seagull would say, that's a lot of cues. There's cues here, cues there. Too many cue spaghettis. There's another grab from So Min Su. So Min Su getting the grab first. So the big important thing here, right? That that like the game breaking thing that I know that was like a minute and a half fight. The only thing that mattered in that entire fight, obviously like everyone blocked everything, everyone played well. The only thing that mattered was that So Min Su and Twilight got their ultimates before Sinatra and Violet did. The only thing that won them this, this team fight. Oh, they're gonna win? Okay. Oh, Violet gets the transcendence. Okay, they don't win the fight, but you, the point stands of why it was close. Now I look ridiculous. Good one, Vancouver. You were supposed to win. And it's already at 60% again? Yeah. 2 CP lol, yeah. What a... <laughs> What a good time to be alive. And Janu has to switch to Wrecking Ball because he's so far away. Alright, what's my Violet play? Oh yeah, he's doing good. Oh yeah, that was important. Yeah, that was a Violet pop-off right there, baby. Alright, but they got 69%. Nice. Um, that's a pretty good hold for Goats. I think Choi is going to clutch again. You got, you feeling it in your bones? This was such an annoying thing, by the way. This diva, everyone did this. You would play this diva here and everyone would just run out through the choke. But the diva is able to just stay here because you can't look at the diva. You cannot turn this corner and then look right. So the divas would just exist here and just shoot everyone in the back and then try and boop someone. And they were like so annoying to get out. Would you rather have all your fingers removed or play this meta? This meta wasn't that bad, right? Like, the meta wasn't that bad. I think one of the reasons I hate GOAT so much is probably because we sucked at it. If you are super, I'm sure he's like, GOAT's meta was the greatest thing of all time, right? Um, so I, and like, you know, like, Reinhardt players, they love this shit. They've been waiting for this moment their entire... Oh, good rush by the Vancouver Titans. Didn't get it, though. Um, I'm sure a lot of people love GOATs, and it wasn't that bad. It was just annoying that it lasted for a year. Super loves goats. Yeah, of course he loves goats. He's a champion, and he was like, he like made his name during goats. Oh wow, that's like me being like, yeah, I love Moth, Moth Mercy. I love double resing. That was like, that was like the peak Overwatch. That was the best meta to ever play. Right? It's like, of course I enjoyed it. I was overpowered. <laughs> Up to 15 enemy 
Were you still at Dallas at this point? No, no, no. The, the, I was I was off Dallas. I, I only played the first two stages of 2018 season uh, with Dallas. I was on Valiant. This is, this is, uh, this timeline is Valiant going 0-7 and me getting benched for being too smart. That, 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 we are in this timeline right now. And if you don't know the context of that and you think I'm joking, I'm not. That's why he got benched. Uh, no, not perfectly. Uh, but that was the reasonings that was given by Moon. Which is kind of a meme, but that's a whole other can of worms that we're not going to open right now. That was a good Diva Bomb. I like the Troy Diva Bomb. That's like the defensive Diva Bomb that we talked about. Oh, Jana gets punished for that. Oh, this is a problem for Vancouver. But this isn't a great fight, but it's like not flawless. So they need to win soon. Otherwise, they're going to come out with ults. They need to get it. But Twilight needs to get the Transcendence. Oh, he got super and then Transcendence. Oh my God, this is actually enormous. Uh, that was great by Janu. Created so much space. Twilight needs to get another kill. The Shock are doing a good job of consolidating, but it's going to give them a... Yeah, that was a good play by... That was a good play by Moth. Not a bad grab, but the transcendence is there. Oh, super goes down though, which is enormous. Like, how is Vancouver going to recover from this? In what world? In what world is this okay? What a ridiculous map. Like, live by the 2CP, die by the 2CP for the San Francisco Shock at least. Are we going to watch Valiant, Titans Valiant stage 3? Probably, right? Maybe I'll talk about it then. How do they not get that tick? <laughs> 2 CP. Oh, that's a good boot. This was a really nice boot to do. As a Lucio, getting the Zaya off the high ground or the, the Reinhardt. You go bop, bop, and then you get the boot. Oh, wow, that was almost a nice shout-out by Bumper. Oh, I remember... Why do I feel like I remember this exact moment? Why do I feel like I remember exact... I've seen this too many times, right? I've seen this setup. Yep. I remember this. I don't remember much about this series, but I remember that play. I think it was the Super Shadow, right? Was it Super Shadow? Yeah, Bumper turned his shield too early. But the timing by Super was immaculate. That was sick, though. That's that's one of the best plays. Like, if you ask me well, like, what was one of the biggest plays, like, that was a map-defining map. Uh, play. Sorry, map defining map. <laughs> Can you imagine? We're, oh yeah, 200 damage shatter as well. Yeah, no, nah, absolutely not. I don't want to think about that. No, we don't talk about Super Rule Choi. Yeah, good job, Choi. Couldn't have done it without you. Super would be nothing without Choi. That's what I just learned. Right? Dude, Slime is just bullying Super. He's just pushing Super around. I think Slime's kind of diffing Moth here so far. Yeah, the number of times I've seen impact from, uh, from Slime is crazy. Slime, Lucio, and Goats was crazy good. Yeah, who was the? Who do you think was the best Lucio in, in Goats? Out of all the Lucios, who was the best? Was it Slime? Who are the other contenders for that? 
Like, Moth was good, but he was like, he wasn't as impactful, but he was consistent, right? Me? Yeah, obviously me. IDK was really good. I remember IDK being really good as well. FD God? I don't think FD God was in the league in, in GOATS, right? He wasn't? Yeah. Marcel? Yeah, Marcel was alright. Maybe it was just slime. Oh, wow. Wow, it goes down. Most certainly was more passive early on, yeah. People people started heavily pushing the limits of what you could do with Lucio's time went on. Jexay? No, Jexay also wasn't in the league in 2019. Jexay came in in 2020 for the Houston Outlaws, right? And then in 2021 went to Dallas Hill. Toby? Nah, Toby's Lucio was never as good as, like, Toby defined how Lucio was played in 2016 and 2017, but Toby even then, like, Toby was never, like, at that level, I think, uh, as Lynn. Jexay was on Soul? Really? I don't remember that at all. <laughs> I don't remember Jexay being on Soul at all. Oh? A Vass would disagree with you? Is that is that the same of Vass who said Jonak was the tenth best Zen of uh, like flex support of all time? Sorry, I can't hear you. I, I was I, my my mind just went to that. Season two soul was forgettable. Yeah, I love when people are like, oh my god, how do you not remember season two? It's like I don't know. I was busy playing the game. <laughs> It's like, oh, it's not like I wasn't there or I don't remember. Or like, or like I wasn't there. Like, I was playing. <laughs> Where do you place Jonak? I think he's top three. I put him at number one on my list, but I put him top three overall. Just because of how good he was in 2018. He won MVP. It's unheard of. And he was so much better than everyone else. Oh, wow. Super just... Why did Super widen out that far? Why? And then that was a good bash by Huxel, but yeah. I was busy filming CNN. I was busy fucking fumbling around on the bench. <laughs> so we got another full hold coming for Vancouver. And this is, Dorado was notorious for one of the hardest points to uh, push, right? It's like, where do we go? Do we go through this choke where they have the high ground? Oh, well, we have to go all the way high ground. But then it's like, even this like choke was kind of hard to get through. Bash through shield still scares me. It's not a thing anymore in this point of the in in this point of this Overwatch League. Oh wait, what? Oh no, Choi ate it. Cause Rascal bashed Janu. Choi, um, nom, 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 nom. bumper goes down as well. That bomb was way too high. Does not matter though. Whatever happened to Bubba, he just, he just disappeared. Yeah, he, he, um, okay. And this is the thing about Bumper. And this is like, some people get upset about this, but I genuinely agree with people in this way. I don't think Bumper was a great main tank. He was good, right? He, he like, but he is not top five greatest old, uh, main tanks of all time, right? He was very good at Reinhardt and he played, the style he played was great for goats. But I think he, it would have been interesting to see Bumper play the game and not, you know, like not be on the Vancouver Titans or play goats, right? It, like maybe he could have proven everyone wrong who thinks the same way that I do. But even like in the times so that you watch like Bumper play for the Vancouver Titans, he throws some maps and like situations like that, right? He was way too aggressive, exactly, right? So. If you think Bumper was like one of the greatest main things all day, that's just a false. So and he so he ended up getting replaced on the Vancouver Titans by Fisher for the 2020 season, and then the Vancouver Titans imploded in the most horrific way possible, <laughs> and ended up taking down a bunch of people's career with it. He got replaced. Oh, that's right. Tizzy didn't Tizzy play in the play in the finals? Tizzy played in the grand finals for the Overwatch League for the 2019 season. I forgot about that. Oh, 
Because Arisa, yeah. And they don't have a speed boost to actually correct that for them. That's what Slime tried to do here. You see, he's leading from the rear to start with. Big bait. Oh, he went to a great, yeah. And that's like, that was the, that was the knife's edge, right? Of like Lucio is that if you, if you miss the timing by a little bit, you just died. Just trying to do too much, right? Both Smurf and Super got benched a lot, right? Yeah, and like both players have like, really like both Super and, um, and Bumpers like Golden Years were in 2019. Obviously, Super's still a great main tank and like has the flexibility, but he hasn't really played or had that dominant aspect compared to what he had in 2019. Who's Tizzy? Exactly. <laughs> oh, Rascal down. Damn, that was a bad fight. That was an important shout out by Bumper. Oh, the grab by Sinatra to try and... Yeah, it's not enough. Ryan just doesn't have the same impact. No, I think Ryan does have the same level of impact on in Brawl when you play Brawl, but it's like Ryan is only good as a character if your entire team plays Brawl, like in Goats, or you're the Atlanta Reign, right? Like Gator on the Reinhardt for Atlanta Reign. Like... You can be dominant playing those heroes, but if you're not playing Brawl, then you just don't play Reinhardt. It's the reality of it. I feel like Titan's issue is because the management had misunderstanding with the full Korean team. Well, my understanding of what happened with the Vancouver Titans, and I might be wrong with this, is that they are a North American organization which has full North American ties trying to run a team, the Vancouver Titans, in Korea. Like, because Vancouver Titans for the 2020 season went back to Korea, right? Because they were in Korea going into it. And then when COVID hit, no? Am I crazy? No, the players went back to Korea. What happened? Because it was something to do with COVID, right? Of like one of the main reasons they put so much strain on it. The, oh, they wanted to go to Korea and they wouldn't let them. They wanted them to stay in NA. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was like, so the Vancouver Titans were in NA because that's when we were going to do the homestand model. And then COVID hit and there was like, obviously the world's shutting down and that kind of stuff. And then apparently they weren't being, like the pl Korean players weren't happy with how they were being uh, handled in the, in the, during the situation. And then it got to like this massive argument and back and forth and then the, all the players ended up leaving from what i've understood and from what i've heard from other people neither side is in the right the organization fucked up really badly and they did not handle it right but also the players did not handle it properly as well like by refusing to play and that kind of stuff so yeah yeah I, I don't know exactly so i don't want to speak to it too much but there was like a massive disagreement between the players and the organization that ended up creating the situation where all the players got dropped. Come say hello. And we'll see how the Shock decide to play this on defense. Uh, you see they did get the first checkpoint and then 93% of the way. Hard to believe the whole situation given the management also owns a ho hockey team with international players. Well, let's be real. Do you think that they have collaboration there? No, they, they have the same parent company, but they don't have the same resources, right? Players won't give it scrim time according to Fisher. I, I find it hard to completely believe Fisher because Fisher's... <laughs> as I said, Fisher literally... How many teams did Fisher get, like, blow up slash get cut from? The Canucks will run like shit too, yeah. Four teams? Three teams? Four teams or something like that? He either got dropped or he blew up, right? Is Yeah, man leaked 222. Yeah, man retired from Overwatch League after that thing and then just leaked 222. Wait, when did he leave? He left the. What did he, he did at some point, right? I can't remember what team he was on. 
He left Seoul. Yeah, that's right. He was on Seoul and then left Seoul because he wanted to like retire or do other shit and then just leaked an NDA thing that they get told. And then people wonder, oh man, I wonder why, <laughs> I wonder why the league doesn't tell the players everything anymore. <laughs> Jeez, I, uh, gee, I wonder why we don't tell people. Fitch still play? I don't believe so. Alright, it's a pretty good attack by the Vancouver Titans so far. I, for some reason, I believe he does like casting or co-streaming for the league, but I don't know if he still does that at this point. I genuinely wish he would come back and play playing for Overwatch. Why do you want Fisher to come back? The dude's known to be toxic to the point that he literally had issues with four different Overwatch League teams. I don't think, even if he was the best player, if I was a GM and he was the best player in the world, I still would not touch him. I, you, he, you, I would never touch Fisher as a player. Oh my god, I have no idea what's happening. Deep bomb, deep bomb, deep bomb. Choi? Good poop. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, the, well, the league did approve him after... Um, wait, did they approve him? Oh, maybe they didn't. After Sol, he never came back, right? But yeah, I don't think... Yeah, I don't think the league would approve him. Can we watch one of your games? We're going to watch one of the st uh, stage three games when we beat the Vancouver Titans. Oh, Vancouver season three. Oh, yeah. What were we just talking about? Dude, my timelines are all mixed. Oh, good shatter. Timelines are all mixed up in my head. Yeah, the Vancouver Titans, which he blew up spectacularly as well. Yeah. Nah, there, there's no way they'd let him do it again, right? That'd be so funny if they just let him come again and then just blow up another team. He, did, he didn't really blow up Vancouver Titans. Like, maybe he was one of the lead proprietors that led the Vancouver team to be, like, so aggressive towards the organization. Who knows, right? Maybe he was one of the conductors for the team to sort of, like, have that big split from the management. Obviously, I, you know, it's just as much management's fault and we don't really know what to expect, but... He was in the explosion, yeah. If you, and it's like one of those things, is, is it a coincidence that it, someone who keeps blowing up teams blew up this thing? It was on the team when it blew up, right? Get him, Choi! <laughs> who actually wanted to stay and stay with the team? Yeah, so I, I don't know. Like, I'm not saying that Fisher blew up the Vancouver Titans, right? Like, I don't know. Alright, let's go. Is he a coach for the Spitfire? No, I don't believe so. The Spitfire? Absolutely not. J Mac is a coach for the. Is a coach for the Spitfire? Who's the coaches of Spitfire? It's J Mac and someone else. Oh no, that's Paris. Because he he's there with Glister and someone else. Who's the coach of London? Christopher. Yeah, Christopher was thing. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, they're, sorry, they're uh, they're on Paris. That's the only person I could think of that you were thinking who was someone who was a player who became a coach. I thought if Christopher was a Philly coach. He was an assistant coach, but now he's now the head coach of the London Spitfire. Toby? Well, yeah, but like J-Mac was like a main tank as well, right? It's the first person that came to my mind. Kuki, yeah. Kuki, is that another one? Main tank head turned coach, turned. Oh, baby. Let's go, Moth. Oh, season be too long, dude. I'm trying to, like, whenever we do these things, I'm blending, like, five seasons, like, or, like, five or six years worth of Overwatch into, like, one thing, and I'm trying to remember the timelines, and I just get lost. I just get lost in the source. Chips are starting on Paris now. I confuse seasons constantly, yeah, like... It's funny how we go from, like, map to map and they're just so dominant in different, like, points. Like, they're not, they're not even changing the comp, right? Like, and I feel like this is, like, the biggest testament to how much, like, a snowball can happen and, like, how things think. These guys are not changing comps. 
nothing but they can go from being dominant on one map to being dominated the next map and you just go map to map to map and it just the tides of a map change based like on like very minute things that happen at like the start of maps and stuff like that oh fisher oh yeah you're thinking of a different fisher that makes way more sense i don't believe he's on london anymore Was he in London? Yeah, that's a different Fisher. That makes way more sense. Yeah, yeah, no. I don't think he is anymore either. I remember looking at it recently and he wasn't the head coach. That makes way more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, good, good take by Vancouver with pretty much just the rally. And Transcendence. Like, look at, wait, did Twilight transcend? In that, I Sorry, I was like... Look at this. Twilight transcends in this fight. Let's look at Twilight's ult charge in this fight, right? So they rally engage and Briggs, right? They both use their ultimates to think. Just look at it go up. Blip, blip. Blip, blip. Blip, blip. Blip, blip. Blip, blip. Blip, blip. 70% ult charge. 75% all charge after transcending at the beginning of that fight. It's how fast people got ults back then. Hawksaw's also 70% to a rally. Like, Check it Dan's like legit 18 miles. I'm so lost in the source. Honestly, it, it really gets like that, right? Everything blends together. Players keep bouncing between different teams. Oh. No shatter. Oh, good grab. Oh, yeah, they're fucked. That's... Post COVID, yeah, honestly, I if you ask me when when COVID started in 2020 and anything that has happened between then, I don't know. I've been inside the whole time. That's all I know. When things happened, no idea. Can't wait to see my boy Corey play for the Washington Justice, right, guys? Where's Corey now? He's doing well in Valorant. He plays for TSM in Valorant. He's doing pretty well with his transition. He was one of those guys who was like an aimer and like everyone knew he was just one of those people that... Oh, good grab again. He has another grab. Good pin. I think that was the right pin. Did Moth just... Moth just... Uh, what happened to Moth? Oh, yo! Look at this Hawksaw whip. Moth drops the beat. Gets booped in. This is how stupid playing Lucio is. And this is the, I'm going to get mad about it. In Overwatch 2, Lucio should not have a drop the beat animation. Moth presses Q out of the grab. Okay. He's in the grab. He gets pinned into the air. He has to beat. He's going for the thing. Fucking Huxa whips him from across the map. And he loses beat. Oh my god. Don't worry, Lucio will be unplayable in Overwatch 2, or he'll get buffed into a, like, people keep saying, it's like, oh, Moth and Lucio looked unplayable in Overwatch 2 playoff, and it's like, well, do you think they're going to leave it like that? Do you think they're going to leave heroes unplayable? No, they're going to fix them, which I, I'm worried that they're going to buff Lucio into fucking orbit, and he's going to become sick for anyone who has good mechanics on him. There's no way they leave a hero that just feels completely trash in a new game, right? I could be wrong, and they could just do that, but I'd, I'd be shocked. It's a lowered area as well, so or you might get a rework, yeah, right? Teams that don't control a point can fire in from the higher ground to try and get early advantages or pickoffs. But for now, all right, what do we got? We got goats on goats again. Shaka gonna give the space first. Cause I play Genji. Don't tell me. No way. Brig on launch defies all logic of hero balancing, yeah. But like, you have to assume that they're going to learn their lesson. Like, it feels like they have learned their lesson from Brig. But that said, when was the last time they released a good hero? Who was the last good balanced hero? Some good old-fashioned Overwatch hero that came into the game. Ash? 
Anna? Okay, we're not going all the way back to 2016. It has to be Ash. It's not Anna. I think it's Ash. Oh, good kill by Bio. I think it's probably Ash was the last one. Because like, who the, like, like Moira, Baptiste, Wrecking Ball. Um, Arissa's kind of funky in her own way. Ball was balanced. Nah, yeah. Like, Ball's okay. Like, I actually, Ball's a fun hero. I like Ball. But, yeah, maybe Ball. Doom? No, I fucking hate Doom. I think Doom is a terribly designed hero. And I will die on this hill. Doom should be in a fighting game, not an Overwatch game. Oh, good pin on the Hawksalt. Hawksalt was rallying as well. That's such an important pin by Super. They need to just live through this. That, ooh, that, okay. That is the most prime example of the Lucio uh, thing. So I think Bumper's pin was too early. First of all, Bumper's pinned way too early. So he should have waited for the bump to go off. But your boy Slime coming here. Look at him. So you wait here. Wait for it. Wait for it. Look at him. You literally, like, I used to do the same thing. You would just, in a beat, you just fucking crouch next to him and be like, Waiting for the timing, and then as soon as the timing of the grab goes off, doop, everyone goes into the air. If the bomb was thrown at the correct height, it should land in the bottom. Everyone else should be in the air, and you can't really block shields below you. And then it goes off. The first hero is Tracer. What is Honest Overwatch hero? Tracer is a very honest Overwatch hero in the fact that she is designed for Overwatch. She is like the epitome of what an Overwatch hero should be. Fast-paced, good aim, and even though she is high-key broken... People don't complain about it because she's a fun hero and she's a cool hero. Did you see the Overwatch 2 Copium Reddit post about Super doing Doom parkour, therefore Doom is a tank in Overwatch 2? Dude, Overwatch, competitive Overwatch Reddit just needs to fucking, they need to like, we need to put him in like a stasis chamber. I think that's what we need to do. We need to put them in a stasis chamber for like a year until we get Overwatch 2 because they're going to fucking break. We can put the Overwatch League social media managers in the stasis chamber as well. And then we can, and every other, like all of the players that are like, this game is so shit, I want to watch it. We can put them all in a stasis chamber for a year and then everything will be better. Titan's going to hold here. You're a genius. I've solved our problems. Don't worry. Hashtag <laughs> bricked up. <laughs> we'll call it the bricked up squad, okay? They can all go to horny jail for a year. Boom. Problem solved. To be fair, didn't they say they're trying to limit CC towards tank classes? Yeah. I, I would expect, I, my guess is I would expect Doomfist to get a complete rework and end up as a tank. That would be my guess. Or he's going to be get a complete, complete rework. Oh, the classic go to spawn on Elias Ruins. Um, bricked up for 5v5. Oh, this was actually so obnoxious when people started doing this. You, people would, everyone would be on this high ground, and you like, where do you go? Anywhere you try and go, the the entire opposition team just drops on you. Okay, they got the grab, wait the transcendence out, and then we grab. Something that we haven't really talked about, Diva's got so much better at eating grabs throughout as as our, as as goats went on and on and on, they got so good at eating grabs. Even to this day, they still use those skills. Three, look at this shit. Look at look at this. Look at look at Violet right now. So Violet. Gets, he's getting whacked by Huxle. He had, but he has a hundred armor protecting him. So they finally get through the shields. You're like, oh man, we might finally be do so be able to do something to the Zenyatta. 
he gets packed and just gets all of his health back. <laughs> Game is so stupid. Literally unkillable Zenyatta's. Never mind, he's dead. That's 300 HP. 300 HP. And Vancouver Titans are going to turn this whole thing around. All right, here we go. Now we go to Well. Well was a classic because everyone got booped into the Well. The bump is not even. Good. This is how bad it was. How annoying it was to play goats on this point is it was just so hard to not get booped into the Well that people just didn't straight, straight up just didn't play it. They're playing Orissa's Cassidy before they decide to play the right the goats. Couldn't Zen get 400 HP at some point? If you get the over armor on her as well, on them as well, I think it goes to 375. 100 from the rally, 200 from the base, and then 75 from the overhill. Because he right clicks all the time. It became a pretty common thing to right click all the time. Uh, against shields, right clicking all the time was the play. Oh. Wasn't it 350? Was it only 50 over here? Was it, how much was the over armor? I thought it was 75. It might be 50. Super is just not going to be able to play this game on one key, I think. He should switch. Oh, good transcendence. <laughs> like the fan's good there, right? Like it's the most amount of damage you can do. They got rally and transcendence. Nobody dying through that. But Violet gets pulled into the pit. Was Bumper silently the greatest Arisa to ever play the game? The classic. He didn't use Fan the Hammer because it was on cooldown. <laughs> Paul had an insane range, yeah. Dude. Paul's been nerfed since him. Yeah, since now. Bumper top five main tags. I, I take back everything about I said about Bumper. Super, what are you doing? Is he going to be okay? Oh, he got packed, I guess. Yeah, I don't think he lives ever against this comp. I think the the monkey is a throw right now. I think they need to go Reinhardt. Like, I think the counter to what Vancouver's doing is to just go Reinhardt and fucking deal with it. But maybe they're afraid of the pulls. But if, like... Uh, yeah, like, because it just becomes a ring around the rosy. But, I like, what Winston just ain't working. This is just too much damage and too much healing that you literally just don't do anything. Oh, God, they're going to high noon. This is so toxic. They have to go down the coast. If they lose it though, then you're looking at Vancouver stealing this map. <laughs> How annoying is that for Super? He tries to engage, jumps forward with the bubble. The yeah. Titans will drop down, use slime to boost their movement speed. And guess what? It's back to the drawing board as they play here on the point. Bro, right, Bumper's great. Yeah, but like I'm not saying Bumper was a bad main tank. Bumper was a great main tank. But is he one of the greatest main tanks of all time? No. Like in the top five? No, I don't think so. This cost, this cost so far, as much as it looks like Shock is winning this fight, that cost them every single one of their ultimates. I guess Vancouver used a bunch of theirs as well, but yeah. Oh god, is he not gonna die? Is Super in trouble now? No, no. I didn't put him top 10. I might put him in top 10. I'd have to have a look. Do people tilt in pro matches? Yeah, absolutely. You don't see it as much and that kind of stuff, but I think there's there's absolutely tilters. Those players generally don't do very well and don't have good longevity, but there are people that are like that, right? Yeah, Darko is a very public example of that. Darko was this, like, great Atlanta Reign off tank who everyone was super high on, and then, like, but it, they found out that he was just incredibly toxic um, and would tilt like crazy in games. At each other? Yeah, well, you're not going to get tilted at someone else. 
I oppose the pop build belief sometimes. The Overwatch League is not a fun-filled rainbow time. All the time. You guys just don't see it. And I and like it should stay that way. Like it, it is not it's not valuable to see in inter team drama. It's it's very ugly. Wow, is Shock gonna pull this all the way back? Yeah, if, if, I feel like, I guess that is a big weakness of the Arisa Cassidy, right? Is that you getting back into the fight, you just can't control the tempo. Oh, Sinatra's, oh, good beat by Moth. Oh, Simon Sue down is a big death. Wow, Shock are gonna pull this back. This map was a back and forth. That is cr This match was so hype, dude. It went back and forth so many times. And the reason, like, you don't see the things like this anymore is because GOATS was, as I've said, GOATS is very much a snowball -y style of playing the game. Like, you very rarely see these 99 to 99 swings or map to map to map to map wins, right? All right, this is, we're playing King's Row. If you ask, if I could go back to this time and you're like, hey, bro, we're going to play GOATS. I want to play GOATS. I want to play it on King's Row. That's it. That's it. I'm a simple man. When I see, when I want to play GOATS, I want to play King's Row because it was such a good map. For, for GOATS. It has good, it has good high grounds. It has good chokes. It has good controls. It's nothing crazy. Spawns are okay. You mean scrims are right? Yeah. Oh, good play. So Min Su just got a little too aggressive. Sorry. If they removed every other map except for King's Row, I'd be okay with it. Wait, Violet? Wow, that's a great flank by... Wait, are they actually... There's no way they hold off of that, right? And they got Rally. Oh, the Transcendence comes down with it. Is he going to pin? Oh, he got... Is super isolated now? No, he's okay. Wow, that was such a smart play to rush through the hotel. It cost them everything. Violet doesn't have transcendence yet. Violet's 50% to his next transcendent and Violet doesn't have it. Right? Unless he got two. I don't think that's true. Just noticed Shock came into stage one players in sixth place. Yeah, we actually talked about that at the beginning. They actually had somewhat of a slow start. Um, with that said, they played against New York Excelsior. The three teams they lost to, they were four and three. The three teams they lost to were all really good teams. It was like MYXL, Vancouver Titans, and... Someone else. I can't remember the other team they lost to, but they, they, were, a, they were a good team. Toronto? No, it was Glads. It was Glads. Kylo was right. And yeah, MYXL was good at goats in the first stage. And they were generally pretty good at goats. And, um, like they had a... I think they were third. They, they had the third best record in the season. That was a pretty bad diva bomb. Like that was like a really poorly executed ultimates by Vancouver Titans. It felt like that. Oh, the shot kind of fucked it up even worse. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Shock kind of botched that. And that used, that was a lot of ultimates as well, right? That's grab, that's diva bomb, that's beat, that's rally. So now that this can snowball out of control pretty quickly if Vancouver gets really good value out of the shadow. It's criminal how Libero's career ended. Yeah, Libero, Libero is a true tragedy. Just literally the cost of bad coaching. That's an early transcendence by Violet. Oh, bumper goes down though. All right, well, you can't argue with the results. You know what's up, Rosa? Oh, good grab. That was a, I, that was, like, think about that. Like, think about what they just did, right? This is what, this is one of the things that made Vancouver so good. Everything was winnable. 
right? They are two down. They don't have their main tank. They don't have their Lucio. They can't run. And they recognize they can't run. Super goes too aggressive, gets punished. Twilight, instantly, transcendence. Okay, we can go. So Min Su, boom. We drop the grab on the Zaya. We know we can isolate the Zaya and they get this heal. They just want a 4v6 because Shock got overconfident and they were willing to cost uh, to use their ultimates in what felt like a losing scenario. And that's one of the things that made the best teams be uh, the best. I think they saw that point Everything is winner was what the Shock did. Yeah, and that's what, the, and like it was about having the ability to recognize that quickly and know the advantages and disadvantages that you had. They want to put the Titans in positions where they're forced to dig deep in those pockets to use those ultimates that they've so. Steadfast is not a thing right now on the Reinhardts. The Reinhardts are fully boopable. Okay, Shadow. So here's the classic. Graviton goes out. The Diva throws the bomb to cover it. Oh my god, how is Soman still alive? If they can keep Hawksall alive. Oh, Bumper just got rolled. All right, here they go. It's literally the same thing that just happened, by the way, right? They lose Bumper. Twilight has Transcendence. If the Shock overextend, they'll try and fight it. I just don't think that the Titans have really had this much experience when a Reinhardt is as aggressive on the other side. Usually when Bumper is playing against a lot of the other teams in the league, they play very passive. You know, he comes in with all this pressure, he's charged, and he's trying to flank. Yeah, okay, now they go to go to Transcendence push, right? And Transcendence push was so strong, obviously. Ooh. The bomb was a little too late. Oh, Somitsu still gets caught by it. All right. Good save, good save by the shock. Ooh, bumper. Violet gets another transcendence. Think about how quick that transcendence was. They started this fight off by using a transcendence push from Violet. Just grab and kill the Ryan. The Reinhardt was, I think, probably the most important character. If you could isolate him first, it was free low. And it, it became a lot more common as time went on with GOATS as well, where you would just grab one person. At the beginning of GOATS, everyone was like, you were looking for those big five to six man grabs and that's what everyone thought was important. The best thing you could do in GOATS was grab that one person off to the side and isolate them before they, any, they could get helped at all. No, if I can super say, yeah, I think you got a little lost in the source on that one. Come with the stage two finals as well. Yeah, there's there's some good ghost matches to be done. Freeze and headshots cannot save that person with trans. Just the sheer amount of damage that you can put. If you go to Discord and everyone shoots them, transcendence does not heal that much, right? Nothing heals you that much for the better. Ryan being instrumental, largest meta super is importance. No, in in Overwatch League history, yeah, that's sort of what we talked about earlier. Grab Diva Bomb from... Oh, that was pretty bad ultimate usage from both teams. Alright, Shock has nothing left really. Bumper's Shatter really is is what they have to hold on to. Look at how far Ryan used to get pushed back. It looks funny now that... Alright, there's a rally. That was a good disengage by the San Francisco Shock. That's hard to do. It doesn't look hard to do. Oh, they've isolated Huxel. Oh. Shatter to slow it down, gets the moth beat out. Counter beat from Slime. Twilight has another transcendence, but I think he probably needs to save it for the Sinatra grab. Yeah, Sinatra's got the grab. Yeah, oh, Sinatra didn't want to throw it. My favorite season of Al? I think it might be season four. Like, per, well, like, I guess I only really consider ones that I didn't play in, right? Because, like, I love Season 1, right? Blizzard Arena, everything. It, like, even though, like, when I was on Dallas and things didn't go perfectly, I loved Season 1 for a thing. But I think viewer experience, like, if you take out the idea that, like, you know, we don't have LAN events and anything like that, I think 2021 was, like, some of the most competitive and cool matches that we had. Season 3 was the worst by far. And then I think it would go... I think it'd probably go season season two, season one, 
Season four, season two, season one, season three is what I would do the order. Because I think Goats was cool for like as a player. I had fun optimizing Goats and stuff like that. Why so many teams have rosters with 10 to 12 players? It seems pointless. We actually had the, a big discussion about this before we started this VOD review. Um, talking about how the, the idea that like subs and like map specialists and being able to have like all these kind of things was a thing that a lot of people thought going into when people could have these big rosters, when people had the opportunity, when people had the money. Everyone tried it, but the history has told us anything is that having a very solid core of six players is generally the best way to have a successful team. Having six players that can play diverse metas and be able to control and create synergy within themselves has always over over um has always been better than um having you know a massive bench. Could it be easier to scrim? It, well, like scrimming within yourself is valuable, but I talked about that as well. We had that in season one of the Los Angeles Valiant when I was on that team. We had 12 players. We had two teams that could completely function on their own. The second team would scrim. The first team would scrim. One of the biggest problems with that is that the first team was way better than the second team. But like, it, to the point, like the second team wasn't awful, but we were like, you were so much better that the scrim, like think of it like, you know, the the Va Los Angeles Valiant in season one was really good, right? We, they would have been like a lower end our team. So like, it wasn't the best practice. And then the, the B team, they're trying to get onto the main team. Like, they don't want to be on the B team. They don't want to be the team that the main team scrims with. They want to play on the stage. And it, I feel like a lot of people get very dejected when it doesn't feel like they're moving towards that or they're not being, being given the opportunity. And that's why also why big benches are bad is that only six players can play at a time. There's going to be six players sitting on the bench every time and people don't want to sit on the bench. That's where careers go to die. Yeah, like season three outlaws, like Rappel and Raucus are just going back and forth. Literally, it didn't matter which one the Houston Outlaws played in that situation in season three. Just play one of them. They were both fine, right? Like you don't need to like, but switching them between maps, you lose synergy, you lose control. They have different ways of calling the game. It is literally just like shooting yourself in the foot, making, giving you less scrim time, less practice, all that kind of shit, right? If there is like, obviously swabbing in players, like if the meta changes, you have a Genji player on the bench or you need a hit scan player, it's valuable to sub players if they don't fit in that meta. But subbing players who play the same role between maps is just makes no sense. And that's why having a deep roster doesn't make sense. Yeah, Chengdu Hunters did it recently. Uh, you said Yveltal and Monk, it's Yveltal and Nisha. Both are great, just pick one. Nisha's better at Brig. I think Yveltal's better at Mercy. Pick one. Like, they both can play either at a good time, or maybe you just threw that. Monk in uh, 1987. That, that was the problem. All right, a million ults. This is the ult fight, right? This is the fight that the Titans need to win. That's a big hole by the San Francisco Shock. Dante and Pelican on Houston is potentially the same problem. I agree. I have a problem with it. Like, it's sad to have two such great players who have similar hero pools. I'm worried that one of them isn't going to play. But you never know. Like, if we end up in, like, a Tracer Echo meta, that's perfect for them, right? Fraggy and Sato drink goats? No, the only reason Fraggy ever played over, over Sato... Wait, 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 did they flip on goats, actually? Did Fraggy play in season two? I actually don't remember. Oh, the bash! Huxol gets him again. This is probably how Moth. I don't want to. I don't want to put this kind of energy in the world. But if Moth doesn't get bashed here, they might full hold. But Huxol, Moth goes for the beat, gets a little too high. Huxol's running him down, bashes the beat. Fraggy was traded to charge. Yeah, I thought it was only Sado during goats. And Sato, the only reason Fraggy was playing before, so like when Sato was on the team, was because Sato was suspended. I think Fuston will try and force follow, double flex DPS. The, the honest answer is we have no fucking idea. 
Oh, wow. That was kind of bad by Moth. Um, but yeah, we have no idea. We, no, we have no idea what's going to be good in Overwatch 2. This is before Moth's- Oh, So Min Su's so sad. So Min Su- That was actually so unfortunate the timing of that, but I think they're going to win anyway. <laughs> the disrespect. Dude, So Min Su is still just sitting in this window. Yeah, it's too much damage. Dude, fully charged Zayo is just... So Min Su has another grab. Like, he's just, just throw it at this point. Merit is good. Yeah, Merit's a good hit scan. I remember watching him play. I was I was impressed with Merit. I thought Merit, Merit was better than Kilo. Uh, when we watched... Uh, O2 boss? Play? Nope. The classic. Wobble wobble, motherfucker. Merit is better than Killer, yeah, but it felt like Killer was the better, the more mainstay player. Well, person name for four months. I mean, it looks like it came in just for the best game in 2019, right at the end, right on the tail end. Ambitious Shatter by the thing. It got Violence transcended out, so you can't even rally. They, this Shatter that hit nothing got both the rally and the transcendence out. Look at this. That was kind of bad by Rascal and Violet. That's a pretty big mistake. Oh! Moth gets Bumper off. That was sick. Let's go, Moth. Vancouver wasn't in the grand finals, were they? Yeah, of this season. Yeah. They got rolled, though. It was 4 0. It was not close. Shock rolled Vancouver in the finals. Vancouver were kind of falling apart. Vancouver were good outside of Goats, but they weren't as good as San Francisco Shock. More hard hit scan than Mary's more flexible. We'll see. Salem. The soup is not for you. I know that's a crazy concept. Ryan pre steadfast, yeah. It's kind of crazy thing, like going back and thinking that Ryan didn't have steadfast. Like obviously steadfast is annoying, but I think it's so necessary. Oh, good shatter. That was such a good shatter. Once again, super Troy Oven coming together to get that shatter. Will there still be contenders this year? As far as I'm aware, I haven't heard anything. I still think Vancouver were clearly the second best team. Yeah, I think so. Um, I can't remember the 2019 playoffs that well. I can't remember who was good. Good transcendence by Violet. He needed to do it. If he dies there, it's over. But that's going to cost them the transcendence. Oh, Super gets gets Rascal? Good bubble by Sinatra. Trey Jobin's just existing on this point. Oh, good grab. Oh, they just couldn't kill enough in it. Violet needs to get this transcendence. He got it. Oh! Yo, slime. Just slime things. That's such a good boot. Violet goes off the cliff. On the slip. Boot by slime. Ooh. Rip Violet. Slime dip, baby. Dude, Huxel's pumped. Alright, map seven, baby. Rialto. Why does it always end up on Rialto? This, the summer showdown? The okay. What is your favorite player? I feel like I just gave mine away. What was your favorite playoffs ever? Like, for playoff match. I'm not talking grand finals, just grand finals. I'm talking stage as well. Because mine is straight up Philly versus Paris on 
on the uh in the summer showdown i think that was the craziest series fucking ever and that's why i thought of the rialto map as a philly fan it's none of them <laughs> yeah 2020 the 2020 philly versus paris that match was nuts i think that's my favorite match of all time That match would definitely be watched. EQO Blade? Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the series where EQO Blade happened. And it, but it was just EQO and Sparkle going sicko mode with blades. Yeah, the EQO won the 1v5 at the end of first point. That's the match. Yeah, there was the sniper pop-off. There was so many good things in that series. Oh, nasty. <gasps> nice boot by Moth. That's winnable now. They only have Lucio heals though, which I think is the big problem, yeah. You really need the Brig. I think the Brig does the most healing out of these three, right? Wait, Moth got Twilight as well? Moth? Moth just 1v1s Twilight and just leaves? Yo, what? The anime power-up begins. Damn, that was crazy actually. Getting the Zen is so important. So they'll have to back up. And then also Slime now has to wait as he spawned up a little bit ago, but he has to provide the speed boost here to Twilight to get him back in the action. Johnny, no one knows he's there. He's looking to just try and knock someone off the high ground or dive down on Twilight. I have thoughts about the Dragons vs. Shock stuff. Like, as much as people acted like that was the death of goats, the death of goats was when they told all the teams that we were gonna go to 2 2 2. Literally, I remember the day that they told us that everything's going to be going 2-2-2. We talked about it as a team on Valiant and we were like, well, do we want to learn how to play goats any better? And we're like, no, let's just fucking play something different. So we literally played Sombra Goats everywhere because we know we didn't need to be better than anyone else. And Shanghai Dragons did the same thing with their Farish shit, right? Like you, everyone, like at that point, it didn't matter. There was no longevity of you need to play goats. You need to at least know how to play goats. It was like, well, fuck it. We don't need to be good at goats anymore. We like we just need to win as many matches as we can in stage three. Just win as many games as you can, and that's that's what happened for a for a lot of teams. Because like I don't think Sombra Goats was better than regular Goats. Maybe on some maps, on some points, but Sombra Goats was a cheese, right? It was a cheese way of playing the Goats that completely changed up the ma method, and you could beat Goats teams that you generally couldn't beat playing Goats if you took the mirror. Free grab. Is there going to be the follow off for this though? Here? Oh yeah, they were ready for that. That was a great grab. That that cost them one ultimate that they're going to get back instantly. Isn't that the definition of a counter? Yeah, but that's the problem with goats. Is that when goats existed, there was no such thing as a counter. Because, so, the reason why goats were so oppressive is you couldn't play another comp on a map against goats. Because even if it was better on, like, the first point, right? Let's say we're talking about Anubis first point defense, right? We want to play Junkrat, and we're going to just spam you out, and we're going to do this stuff. That's great for the first point, but if you lose the first point, if you don't go goats and the other team go goats, you can never switch two goats without losing about three fights you could never transition out of goats into goats and that's why everyone always played goats almost everywhere because <coughs> it just fell apart as soon as it stopped working prime example that actually happened in this match was the well map right vancouver titans were like well we want to play we're going to play the arisa cassidy and because it's better for the first fight it worked for the first fight, but then as soon as they lost control, they were 99 to zero. As soon as they lost control, they tried to go to Winston Goats. Didn't matter. They lose all the way 100 to zero because it is impossible to gain traction and footing because you can just win fights too easily playing Goats because it was so oppressive. So if you were going to commit to a cheese, you had to commit to a cheese. And sometimes it didn't work. Like, I don't think the... Well, I'm going to talk about this more in the thing. I don't think the Shanghai Dragons Farrakomp would beat the San Francisco Shock consistently. I think eventually the San Francisco Shock would have worked out a way to play goats against it. And teams would have worked out how to play some form of goats against it and people would have to switch. The main reason it worked is because people weren't, didn't know how to beat it. 
people haven't played like think of how many times shanghai dragons would have practiced playing farah versus goats right think about how many how many scrims how many practice times how many situations they would have practiced playing farah versus goats now imagine how many times any team playing against shanghai dragons would have faced the composition that the shanghai dragons were playing to the level that they were playing that comp it's almost impossible if you haven't scrimmed with the Shanghai Dragons. And that was their trump card, is that no one knew how to beat it at the time. They don't have the damage. for. They need so Su, like, in this situation. He just fucking yeeted it. Did he hit anyone? Oh, he got the Ryan. That's not bad. Ooh, Sinatra's very aggressive. That might have been too aggressive. Good beat by Moth to save it, though. But they have, yeah, don't take this as me discrediting Shanghai. They, they hey, fuck it. They, they played the comp. They beat everyone. They, they absolutely were the best team in that stage playing their comp. Like, that's not me discrediting it in any way. I'm just saying it's sort of, it's me sort of highlighting how oppressive Goats was. Shock of four minutes going to this last point. Oh. oh, bumper. Oh, that's a good shatter, though. No one was expecting the 180 shatter out of the pin. Dude, I feel like that got so many people back in these days. Like, where you're like, oh, bumper's an idiot. Kill him. And then he would just 180 shatter you. And you're like, fuck. <laughs> Should have seen that coming. And the important thing is that Twilight saved his transcendence through all that. Why wasn't Mei played more during Goats? Because Mei just got run over. Right, like May, like what, like May Ultimate. If it goes down, that's great. But even if May got all, even altered, there's so there was too much healing, and she doesn't do enough damage in the shields, and she doesn't have enough personal sustainability to do anything. So she just kind of falls over. Like it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it did. Like the the question is right. So like you want to play May, right? What do you give up? Do you give up the D.Va? You can't really give up the D.Va because you lose so much damage mitigation to keep your Reinhardt alive, right? So you need to play incredibly fast with the Mei. Um, and then you can't eat grabs, so the Zaya gets free Gravitons whenever she wants. She can just throw them at you. And then that kind of stuff. You can't take the Zaya out. She's all the damage, right? She could freeze through multiple people. Okay, so it takes two seconds to freeze through multiple people with your left click, right? Or whatever. However long it takes. In GOATS, do you think you can get close enough to the entire opposition team and hold down your left click and not die? If you get bashed, you're dead. If you get shattered, you're dead. If you get grabbed, you're in trouble. If you get anything, you're in trouble. She just wasn't tanky enough. Like, even the benefits, like, she just... She was hard. It was hard to get value out of her. If you were going to play Mei, you had to play incredibly fast and isolate the Rhine every single time. Mei would do nothing. Remember, there's Lucio speed boost to get away from the Mei ult. You can't throw the Mei ult very far because, the, as I said, Divas would eat it. It's just a, there's a lot of counterplay against the Mei. Good beat. Oh my god, that shatter. How is Bumper alive? Oh, Sinatra died. That was such a big kill by Twilight. A shock probably finished the map here pretty quickly. Yeah, can't contest high ground or take flanks as Diva, exactly. Did we get a Shanghai Dragons Championship skin? We did. The uh, Echo skin. But has the Echo skin. The Angel and Devil Echo skin. Good grab. Twilight needs this transcendence. Twilight kills Moth again. Dude. I, I'm, I'm going to say it. Twilight's been better than Violet this, in this series. I think Super is hard diffing Bumper, and I think Twilight is diffing Violet. 
It's not that much of a deal. And then Slime is dipping Moth. Moth's come alive a lot more in the second half. But Moth is dipping Twilight. Yeah, it's a never ending cycle. Shock finished. There's no way Shock lose this, right? Oh, the Dragons Championship skin. Oh, yeah, right. I didn't think about that. Yeah, I guess not. Didn't they come out with a statement? Wasn't everyone really mad about that at some point? That they, they announced that they weren't going to be making skins? Didn't they announce that already? There's no more MVP skins, and I guess maybe they already decided that they didn't want to do it. Wow, Slime just... Wow, that was, that was way too easy. Sinatra ruined it for everyone. I feel like the league was trying to find a way to not do these skins anyway. It was taking them so long to make these skins. Like, remember, like, Sinatra's skin came out, like, halfway through 2020, like, or some shit, right? It was weird. I don't know. The whole situation was kind of weird. John said it. Shanghai won confirmed. Oh, okay. There you go. Well, it's taking them too long. Once again, I'm going to say it's taking them way too long. Maybe it'll be an Overwatch 2, right? That'd make more sense. The first one, yeah. I don't know understand how, like, the process of skin. I don't know how to make skins. These are all very talented people, but... Sinatra's down again. Sinatra's died first the two times in a row. And Rascal just used Rally. Oh, no, 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 no. Sinatra's not even able to grab yet. I, I'd be okay with launch opening week. Yeah, I can see that. Don't they speed run this whole attack? Well, they seem like it. I don't remember this match that much at all. Oh, that was ambitious bumper. Yeah, like, it would make total sense if they released it on first of the week, as you said, with drops and tokens and stuff like that. Oh, God, everything is going wrong for the Shock. Yeah, good point, Mitch. <laughs> Literally, it feels like the Shock are playing desperate now, right? Instead of getting a proper foothold. Is this the most memorable GOATS game? It, it, probably, right? This was probably the best go GOATS game to happen. The season, the stage two one is pretty good as well, right? Oh, wow. Good bash. Ooh. Oh, no, no, no. Did Shock win 4-0? I thought they won 4-2 in the stage two. They win 4-0 in the grand finals, right? Stage two finals was 4-2, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm right about that. Yeah, okay. I think I think. The grand finals aren't worth watching. Bumper gets Rascal out with the rally again. Bumper has been very good on that, I will say, on uh, on uh, pinning out uh, Rascal. Oh my god. Do you think any team at their peak could beat Shanghai from last season? No. I think Shanghai were the best team to ever... Uh, the, the most recent version of the Shanghai Dragons were the best team to ever play Overwatch 1. I'm not talking... Like, and I'm talking relevant to today, right? Like, because... Like, if you want to go through, like, the, hist the history of time, like, when people were playing, then you can make them more relevant. But Shanghai Dragons were the best team. Like, you could not put, import any team to that, the, like, now and beat the Shanghai Dragons. Flutter lip are too much. It's not just flutter lip. It's literally every single one of their players are insane. That's, that's as simple as that. Like every single one is close, is at least top three within their role, right? 
launches it into the back. And you can make arguments for all of them to be number one, right? Yeah, but yeah, but flat a lip though. I, I agree. <laughs> but flat a lip though is kind of nuts. If you let Shock play goats, maybe yeah, like maybe if we're talking like something like that. Was this the true combo goats? I thought it was Moira as well. No, Moira goats was before slash after. Moira goats, in my opinion, was an easier version to pull off, but I think Zen goats was better than Moira goats. Yeah, Moira Goats was like the OG Goats, but Zen was better than Moira. But Moira was easier to pull off because it was just a lot more simple. You just fucking ran at people and everyone got healed and you just ran. While Zen, you need to play a little bit smarter and play around the Discord Orb. They broke a minute? Oh my God. I think Glads are the closest to Shanghai. Yeah, I agree. I think Glads, I think Glads would have given Shanghai the best run for their money in a straight up game of Overwatch, right? Like, I think, I think Atlanta was the best brawl team in the playoffs this season, and Chengdu was the best Farrah team in the season, and Dallas was the best Winston team. But the team that would have given Shanghai the best run for their money playing like straight up metas, I think would have been Glads. What was your favorite form of goats? I, I love I love traditional. I love vanilla goats. I think the Zen in the goats. Every role is so fun in, in goats, in my opinion. Like, I don't understand all these DPS players that used to used to complain that they had to play Brig. You know how much fun Brig looks like? You do so much. Okay, there's the beat, Transcendence. There's a grab by Sinatra. Great grab. Twilight gets pinned out. Beats good by Slime, though. But I'm pretty sure... Oh, they, they, yeah, they didn't get... They didn't get the baby diva. All right. Yeah, so Shock win the first fight. Shock win... Wait. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't shooty shoot, but you're so overpowered. They're like the head clickies. Like, they're so overpowered. It was so over... What do you mean? The clicky clickers, the hit scan players, were the ones that played the Zaya. The flex DPS... I guess the flex DPS are the ones who played, like, the Genji Doom Pharah back then. But they're so... I, what I would have killed to be able to play the Brig instead of the Lucio and Goats, man. I wish I could have played the Brig instead of the Lucio. It looks so fun. You you have so many playmaking abilities. You have so many things you can do. You're overpowered. You're unkillable. Oh, Twilight getting Violet. So Mitsu getting Sinatra. There it is. Lucio was a little general though, yeah, but like my problem was that I couldn't catch up on Lucio. These guys, like how do I, how do I play against Slime as Lucio? Oh dude, they're so confident. Wait, they went to a break? Oh wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I can't remember. Zaya and Goats was so fun. So much energy, the cast is the crowd, the game. It literally is the result of being in LAN events. And I, as I said, in my last history of Overwatch, in my hopium, when Overwatch gets back to live events, we will go back to these sick moments and we will get back to all the things that made Overwatch League great. But right now, oh, cause like season four, you know, people still consider season four one of the greatest seasons and we didn't have a single live event. If we can get back to that, if we can get back to that, it's gonna be fucking hype. Oh, Bumper goes down. Hope you makes a point anonymous, yeah. A few at least, yeah, but I'm talking like big live events, right? Like I'm not talking, like obviously all these individual home stands are gonna be great. I'm talking about where everyone comes, like a grand final, right? Or like a, the mid-season playoffs. Like I'm hoping the mid-season playoffs and the grand finals bang. I want to see the players' emotions as they play and not just through like a monitor or a room preview, right? Francisco Shock have to go now. Super sees the payload. This is the checkpoint right here. 
Oh, slime get moth gets diffed. Oh, so I'm in two grab. Oh, the shadow was so late. Dude, if Bumper hit that shadow earlier, it was over. Not gonna lie, home stands without stakes were kind of boring. I, uh, like, I stand behind this statement as well. Season three would have flopped. I think COVID saved season three like crazy. Season three would have sucked. We would have had live events, but I think the whole model was was bad. Oh, there's just trance push. Yeah, literally all you have to do is run at him. And there it is. There it is. Titan had the cues. Too many cues in the end. Oh, Mr. X is yelling so much. Yeah, Matt seems so excited. Sad super. Breadsticks? <laughs> Iconic sad super. Yeah, Iconic sad super's coming. Don't worry. After this, they win everything. Your boy Harsha. Yeah, I forget Harsha was on this Vancouver Titans team. Sad super. I mean, the shock played Vancouver better than anyone we've seen all stage. But it's a huge statement win for the Titans. They come in to the Overwatch League confident. Yeah, except for stage three, yeah. Alright. And that's it. And that's it. We'll, we'll call it there. Um, yeah, so that was that was the first history of Overwatch with Goats. That was Vancouver taking it over the San Francisco Shock. Absolute banger of a series. Probably one of the best matches of all time. Um, but, like, I, I like to watch these things because it goes back in time. Every now and then, I'm like, maybe Goats was super interesting to watch. And it has some really hype moments, but there is some real stinkers. And, like, obviously, this was a great match. Maybe we should just watch a stinker of a match to just highlight how bad it was. But it was really bad. When bad goes happen, bad goes happen. Um, but yeah. I hope you guys found it insightful. I feel like I posed like nine different questions throughout this VOD review. Let me know what you think. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, uh, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to be pumping out histories of Overwatch. Wait, are you playing with the GoXLR? Don't play with that. Um, I'm going to be uploading more uh, history of Overwatches faster uh, as we get close to the season. So make sure... Uh, hey, don't fight that. Um... So make sure to tune in, check those out. Love you all. Have a great night and I'll see you guys next time.